Hi, it's been a while. You may remember the update we did on Phoenix propulsion system a few months back. Well, this is another one. Let's talk about recovery. Let's get into a bit of a prelude first, sort of. Why do we even need a recovery system, especially one that fully recovers our rocket? I mean, this isn't SpaceX after all. And with Karma 1.0, we also didn't plan for a complete recovery. The answer is easy. EUROC, the European rocketry competition that we are going to take part of, requires all its participants to fully recover their rocket. Which is why Phoenix was designed around being fully recoverable. Now, this year round, we weren't actually accepted to EUROC, so technically we don't even need to be fully recoverable anymore. However, being fully recoverable is still fantastic for a plethora of other reasons, as you might imagine. Having reasoning out of the way, let's talk about what's changed, or rather, how it was before we changed it. Karma 1.0 was a fully separating rocket. It employed a design where, once the rocket reached its maximum altitude, the nose cone would be fully separated from the booster, leaving two separate parts to fall or, well, glide back to the ground. The important part here is that we were really only planning to recover the nose cone with a parachute, having it glide back down, whereas the booster would just drop back to the ground. That was until we learned about the Euroc requirements. In typical Astra fashion, we cobbled together a design and made it to Euroc with that. As you might imagine, with time being short, we couldn't really extensively test that system, though I should say that it did work. Which is also why we thought of it before and with Phoenix. I gotta learn from your mistakes, right? Now, Phoenix is actually no longer a fully separating rocket. The nose cone and the booster will stay connected through a rope or a cable, I'm actually not too sure on which, but either way, this will give us the opportunity to recover this system with just one pair of parachutes. That is a really important factor, because it allows us to reuse the parachutes which we manufactured for Karma 1.0's booster without major difficulties. But how does that even work, you may ask? Isn't a whole rocket going to be much heavier than just a booster? Fun fact, it's actually about the same weight as Karma 1.0's booster, because we managed to shave off so much weight from Phoenix design. This is incredibly beneficial, because we won't have to spend a massive amount of time on developing new parachutes and a new system for deploying those parachutes. However, we did have to invest a lot of time into developing a new mechanism for separating the nose cone and the booster. You see, one way we reduced Phoenix's weight was by completely removing the old separation system, a mechanical solution which relied on a set of motors that would rotate the nose cone until it unlocked from the booster. From there, a set of springs would push the nose cone off and away from the booster. In rockets our size, such a system is pretty rare, and for good reason. Motors are heavy, and combined with a butt-ton of aluminum, they are really, really heavy. You can actually see both the massive servos that we're using to rotate our gears, as well as the aluminum frame encompassing them here. As if that wasn't enough, the system was really big. It occupied a lot of space in the rocket because it was really tall. That space was mostly full of air, so it wasn't space that we could use for anything else, otherwise it would come in the way of the mechanics. It was in fact so inconvenient that we scrapped it, saving us a lot of weight, space and headaches. <laughs> but how do we actually separate the Phoenix booster and nose cone now? We've implemented a more common solution, a CO2 cartridge instead of the motors. Once open, the pressure released will launch the nose cone off of the booster. As you can see, this is a lot more compact while also contributing a lot less weight. One thing to notice here is that while CO2 cartridges are commonly used in rockets our size, we are not opening them in the usual way. Usually, you would blow a small hole into them using explosives or pyrotechnics. Pyrotechnics, however, bring another handful of issues with them. For one, they are quite expensive, or at least in comparison to what we sell on, but they can also be quite dangerous if you're not an expert at handling them. We're also not actually allowed to use them here in Germany without a license or move them around Europe without a permit. Instead, we decided on actually opening the CO2 cartridge on the ground and then plugging it into the system. Now, you may wonder, again, doesn't the CO2 
just escape if you open the cartridge on the ground? Well, actually no, because we are controlling the flow of CO2 with a valve. Once the cartridge is open, we plug it into that valve and only once that valve opens, the CO2 actually escapes. That means once Phoenix reaches its necessary altitude, we will just have to use the servo inside the separation system to open that valve. We've actually had a few problems with this, like with the valve opening too slowly or the CO2 escaping without building any pressure. That's all mostly fixed now and we've tested this quite a bit. There's only one thing left to talk about now, and that is backup. Should the valve, for whatever reason, not open, or open too slowly, this backup will have kicked in and shot the nose cone off of the booster. This backup comes in form of a tube, running up from the pressure tank to the nose cone. A few seconds after the valve opens, this tube will open as well, exhausting the remaining pressure from the tank to push off the nose cone as well as the small parachute that is attached to it. This small parachute is to reduce Phoenix's initial velocity, as to not damage it when we deploy the main parachute. Speaking of, the main parachute will deploy at 450 meters of altitude and drastically slow Phoenix descent. We've already been testing those parachutes in a wind tunnel as you can see and they're looking pretty great. Since they're the same as Karma 1.0, they should be. Would be disappointing if they didn't anymore. You're all caught up on Phoenix's new recovery system now and you'll be able to see it in action on our channels when we go to launch Phoenix over in the States in November. That's gonna be awesome. Now, as always, remember to keep expanding your horizons.